गुड इवनिंग ऑल रेस्पेक्टेड चेयरमैन डॉक्टर राजीव संजीव कल्ली मैम एंड दिस वर्कशॉप इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज वॉट आई फाइंड फ्रॉम माई पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट्स एंड द फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स स्टिल ए कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंसुलिन थेरेपी इज नॉट कंप्लीट अमोंग द डायबिटीज केयर गिवर्स as well as the physicians we try our level best but as long as the diabetes number is increasing it's very important that will inspire everyone on a hands on program so this contains very brief lectures followed by a hands on program as already briefed by uh, our uh, uh, chair and i'll be taking you through a case based discussion followed by a demonstration of injection technique and i wish more people should have attended so i request the uh, people from iocon to get people who are uh, just in front taking tea and inform that the insulin workshop has started because we were a little late a uh, few of the uh, attendees from uh, different uh, institutes they are outside so uh, the pragmatic approach on insulin initiation uh, of course the first topic has to be initiation because you diagnose and you will start so we'll see it uh, case based uh, and the case is uh, uh, shrimati uh, 52 year old uh, diabetic for last 10 years keeping taking oral medications uh, was on metformin as usual you all start to start with after a couple of years started taking glimepiride 2 and sitagliptin 100 added to that right now she is on three drugs and uh, clinical parameters which were seen is bmi is 25 weight is 70 kilos vitals in the systemic examinations normal fixed diet calorie intake of around 1500 so the uh, weight is not a big problem for her the purpose of saying this family history of Uh, cardiovascular disease there so they have to be extra careful because diabetes itself is a atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and can uh, precipitate a heart failure or a acute coronary syndrome a1c is 9.1 we are not very happy looking to the a1c 182 is the first thing and the pp is to 44 what next patient is already on metformin glimepiride and tagliptin and with three drugs you get this report and 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 the duration is almost 10 years diabetic duration is 10 years then uh, patient has a average bmi of 25 so uh, are we going for another drug which normally the patients will request you and many of our physicians do that they go for not only fourth fifth sixth in seventh i have seen the inertia for the insulin initiation is more in physician's mind than in patient's mind what i have felt and what uh, our chair person uh, dr fatak told 100% agree the earlier you get the better players in the diabetic game you get better outcome so i'll prefer to put her on insulin and i'll give my valuable time say half an hour say one hour to convince her why insulin please do that don't go by the patient's word people doctors think that the patient will be lost and go to the other physician and they start adding uh, sgl2 inhibitors adding uh, uh, glitazones uh, adding hydroxychloroquine and and what not so, so it, it, it's not the guideline it's not the science that we are practicing should another oh be added how many of you think please raise your hand that's good we have good attendees the workshop not thinking of adding the fourth oed why should we start insulin in this case let let me reason out let us see the rational for initiating insulin therapy with basal insulin i am showing you a graph where the diabetic the plasma glucose is Much higher, it starts higher, moves higher, 
and then non diabetic is at the baseline so hyperglycemia by elevated fasting is what you are seeing and our purpose is to fix the fasting while initiating insulin our purpose is to get it at the baseline non diabetic level and fix fasting first all of you have heard that that if we are starting with a controlled blood glucose they along the spikes and the uh, the, 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 fluctu the fluctuations or the, uh, the, the uh, levels of the blood glucose postprandially will be within our control. And this is a very clumsy slide guiding your decision cycle for the patient centered glycemic management in type 2 diabetes management. Assessing the key patient characteristics, considering the specific factors that impact choice of treatment, the shared decision making to create a management plan, agreeing on the management plan, implement management plan, ongoing monitoring and the support and review of agreeing on the management plan is a long story. So you have the patience to go through to convince your patient. Till physicians have not, have not accepted, till physicians have not developed the determination to motivate their patients to take patient will never take they have a very easy option of taking another drug so, so this is a big chart that you have to follow to uh, to motivate your patient and you know about the ada approach to initiating titrating insulin in type 2 diabetes uh, the starting of 10 units a day or 0.1 to 0.2 units per kg adjusting 10 to 15 percent that's four units once or twice weekly and, and Fasting target and the postprandial target of 130 and 180, you know. And once is not controlled, you can start combination injection therapy by uh, adding one rapid acting insulin for the largest meal or by changing to premix insulin twice daily. And, and either of the group, you can add a GLP 1 and then uh, still not controlled, adding two rapid acting, changing to premix uh, three times a day is given. So all of you know about this approach and, and this is what you have to remember, type 2 diabetes, getting basal insulin uh, with metformin or non-insulin agents at 10 units per day or 0.1 to 0 0.2 units per kg per day. So it's, it's, it's average 10 units taken and you can up titrate weekly or bi-weekly testing the blood glucose. This is what uh, the, the the algorithm says and then this is the guideline which clearly tells you starting vessel in long acting insulin intensifying with prandial control here a1c is less than 8 we are comfortable with 0.1 to 0 0.3 a1c is more than 8 0.2 to 0.3 to 4 and, and with this levels the titration phase has to be done and uh, you have to pick glycemic goal Intensifying by adding prandial insulin till it basal plus, basal plus, plus, and the basal bolus. Once the basal insulin has failed to control, add a single dose, single bolus with the largest meal, we tell it the basal plus. If two meals, the basal plus, plus, every meal is basal bolus. And most of the hospital patients are followed with basal bolus. These are all in regimen. Vessel only, vessel plus, vessel plus plus, special bolus. An early and timely initiation of the insulin, you get macular infarction down by 14%. A1C is controlled, then you get diabetes related death by 21%, microvascular complication by 37%. For 1% decrease in A1C, you get all this. And this is the impact of the intensive therapy. I've seen 100 times this slide of UKPDS and this is it. How the microvascular complications are down, how the cardiovascular disease is down, and how the mortality is down in the patients well controlled with the insulin as well as the oral drugs. So what should be the ideal dose to start with? That already we have discussed that uh, this 0.1 to 0.2 to 0.3. A1C less than 8, more than 8, you are titrating 
and adjusting the dose. This is the AAC guideline and the ADS picks about starting 10 units, but I showed you and 0.1 to 0.2 and adjusting 10 to 15 percent, the two to four units once or twice and weekly to reach the testing target. And then if there is hypo, have to take steps accordingly. The next question comes dose type, dose timing. Many people ask when should we give this vessel dose? We know about the hepatic glucose output. And then throughout the night, the liver pours the glucose to the circulation if the glycogen storage is intact. And that's what the first thing goes very high. So the patient has agreed. Administrating the insulin, whether in the, you want to give twice or uh, if you want to give in, or give in the evening, that's, that's, that's important. And, and when it should be given, and there's a lot and lot and lot many studies are conducted, you know, starting from NPS days, starting from the uh, glargine days, we have seen the effect. And once the, 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 the 24 hours control is achieved, the, the blood glucose remains steady, and, and the ideal period that we prefer to give is before uh, dinner or evening, so that the hepatic glucose output portion is taken care of and we get a good first thing I showed fixing the first thing first so multiple doses as per the guideline you gave 10 units patient doesn't have control can you give in multiple doses this basal insulin what is the evidence or what is the split dose you ask me I browse the literature I'll prefer to increase the vessel insulin dose, but I don't prefer the treating dose of this vessel uh, uh, insulin, which can overlap because there are uh, uh, many, there are three categories of vessel insulin. One is a uh, one uh, group which acts like pH like in, works around 12 hours. There are pickless insulins which work, work for 2 hours, have uh, long acting analogs as well. So this patient has. Returned after three months, uh, and the, the data shows it's 8.9 percent. First thing is 170, it is 240. Patient came late. We usually titrate earlier than three months. So many times you get this, they're missed to follow up, they come late. So first thing you have to find out what can be the reason for poor. All the instructions given regarding drug administrations. Important parameters is how many times the patient monitored, how often was monitored, and the different techniques of the injection, the correct or not. Following the workshop, we have three stations, the front, middle, and the back, and then I'm sure uh, it'll be happy to see the techniques, how we should go about. And if the patient is not well controlled, have to titrate the dose accordingly along with the oral drugs and and see that to follow more frequently the controlled blood glucose than uncontrolled. Another case, 46 old year old male, seven years diabetic, uh, biphasic isophane insulin 3070, 20 units uh, before dinner, uh, uh, and patient comes with a lab report of 170 100. Nocturnal hypo, the fixed uh, meal time. So here the doctor decided to shift from biphasic to glycine. How should you go about the dose? Biphasic uh, insulin, I said 30, 70, was once daily, converting unit per unit and giving once daily glycine. And then uh, this is another case where. Uh, uh, this is a case we, we need to take up the discussions. I'll tell you the uh, uh, formula to convert in interest of time. Here, a 48-year-old teacher, known diabetic, 12 years, metformin and premixed insulin, uh, 30 units pre-breakfast and 16 pre-dinner with first thing 125, EP210, A1C7.5, again not controlled. So here, regarding premix to twice daily, uh, uh, um, the appropriate is 
communicating with 80% of the total units of the NPS component of the premixin. So suppose patient is on two doses, but the NPS component is around 100 units. Then you can start with 80 units of Glenglargin doses. And, and, and last two slides, what are the rational behind suggesting basal insulin in the first line treatment? The, the patient like a single dose, Increase insulin sensitivity, improving beta cell function, improves A1C. What will suggest? Um, in my opinion, a uh, patient can maximum accept a single prick when they are moving from the tablet. That helps. And then because the control becomes good, A1C becomes good, it helps all the way to prevent the complication. Last slide determining the basal dose. We discussed about the 0.1 to 0.2 chain units, the calculation, the intensification, titration. So, what do you consider? Body weight, diet composition, fasting blood glucose, pre meal blood glucose, physical activity, physiological status, or all of the above. Obviously, all of the above, and you have to go by that. So, uh, thank you again uh, for the time and to uh, back on people for uh, having such important workshop. Uh, we are there and we'll be happy to take up the discussions with any.